we have here at Ride Media, which is an Australian YouTuber, and uh, he is on the weighing 6.9. Okay, so let's check. I'm going to pause that for seconds. There's a great video here by Rob. Um, put together a new video. Nice, nice paint job on that on that track, by the way. And uh, we have 6.92 kilos. So a bit porky, a bit porky. This is a S SLR version, correct if I'm wrong. The latest Stram Red ETAP Axis, which is about a two and a half kilo group set. Um, which is about 105 weight. So this is 6.9 kilos. Uh, that's that's the heaviest amount I've ever seen. All right. So we'll just pass forward here. Very nice looking bike. Finished really, really nicely. Um, and we pause here, we can see that there is the headset. I'll get another side shot here. Headset um, spaces. They look like a praying mantis egg sack. Now, I like that. I like that look. Um, hang on, where's a better photo? I've had some really good shots in here. And uh, where is Here we go. All right, bang. Back to the start of the video. And uh, here we go. I right, was pause that there. So that's a that's what it looks like. Hang on, can't really do any pause it. This track pose ran out, of, ran out of carbs. Let's pause it. Here we go. All right, here we go. Now let's pause. So, all right, here we go. This is the SRAM. Oh, is that Force? Oh, okay. Is it Red or Force? One of, one of the two. Maybe it's Force. Okay. So it's not the top of the range one. Not the top of the range. I was wrong. I'm, I stand corrected. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's an, an SL frame. Wouldn't, it wouldn't matter anyway. 6.9 kilos. And uh, very nice color. Trek do a good one. The neons hold up pretty well on there. But it's definitely heavy, isn't it? It's porky. Add some pedals. You're talking 7.3, 7.2 kilos for a uh, not a cheap bike. Let's have a look at the Trek Amonda Hype. So this is, you know, it's been released on the embargo day. And it's basically, you know, it's it's paid marketing advertisement, semi aero faster everywhere, um, addictive fun, uncompromising discs. Let's have a look at else we got here. So it's just yeah, every day, boom, boom, boom. So Trek have spent a bit of money um, on that date to uh, get a bit of bit of hype going on there. Unco uncompromising disc only. Uncompromising. What does that mean? A more all round aero focused <laughs> this this whole push for aero stuff uh, it is quite hilarious the aero aero for me is just a, an absolute marketing gimmick in my strong opinion i mean I, and i sell an aero bike i ride an aero bike it's purely marketing okay if you want aero slam that stem put on a skin suit that's aero otherwise worrying about your shape of your, the shape of your tubes on your bike is hilarious let's go let's and let's go to cycling tips they always do a good uh, a good marketing spiel so that's a 698 gram unpainted frame. Like, why even why even quote that weight? Who who would do who would buy an unpainted trek? They do such a nice paint job. Why would you even bother having one unpainted unless you're going for the lightest build? And then you would be using disc brake bike. You'd be going for one of the old ones. So this is the oh, this is the red crank. Okay. Um, and I'm a fan of SRAM, but um, this stuff's so heavy. It's so heavy. My ten-year-old group set is lighter than this. You know, I can. My ten-year-old Trek Madone is lighter than this bike. You know. So we have got semi-aero, faster everywhere. <laughs> so that's, that's I like that one. That's good marketing. Semi-aero, faster everywhere climbing bike. <laughs> this is fucking hilarious. Oh, the mod is still light and still stiff, but now there's an extra dose of freeze. But you're not gonna notice. <laughs> this would be hard. It'd be a hard job being an editor today for cycling tips or any websites because you got to talk so much bullshit, you know, like to appease the mammals who are gonna buy the product. All right, so claimed unpainted. I mean, 365 grams for a fork, disc fork, in my opinion, is too light. I'm, in my opinion, I think we're gonna see some recalls. In the future, we're seeing recalls of Cannondale, BMC, and specialized disc forks. Correct me if I'm wrong. And, uh, you know, it's this is 6.8 kilos. This one, SRAM ETAP. So, this ain't a cheap bike. <laughs> Whoa, bummer mia. That's US $12,000, and it's only 6.8 kilos without pedals. That's insane. I bought a specialized S Works Ruby second hand for 650 bucks. And I put some wheels on there for now, but 200 bucks. That's 850 Aussie. That's about 500 US. And it weighs 6.6 uh, .6 with no pedals. That's a crazy. Anyway, um, somewhat shadowy ride quality, no rim brake option, long turbo headset. Oh, hey, okay. Credit where credit's due. They did critique it. 
as well. Okay, so that's good. Long-term headset hassles. That's good. That's uh, good. No more BB90. Uh, T47. Low frame weight. Excellent. Low frame weight doesn't matter if you do. Your group set weighs 2.5 kilos. So anyway, this is, uh, you know, we're going for the aero push. They're pushing the aero because aero is the latest trend in the last couple of years. I think Specialized really kicked off the Venge. But if you look at the people who won the most Tour de France stage wins, Mario Cipollini, Mark Cavendish, they did it majority on standard bikes. Uh, Aero is a gimmick. It's a gimmick. But it, hey, it looks cool. And if you're buying a bike because you like the look of it, it's artwork. I get it. Right? I get it. If you buy a bike based on your emotions, you like the look of it, I'm like you. I love a good paint job, etc. For sure, a bike's got to look good. So if you're buying a bike based on aesthetics, okay, it's fine. I get that. If you're buying a bike, if you've got the current Amanda, and you're thinking, oh, my Monda's not as aero as a new one, then you're tripping. You're absolutely tripping, all right? If you want to upgrade it, it's not an upgrade. It's a different bike, all right? It's not going to be, you're not going to be faster on this than the other one because of the aero gains on the frame, all right? If you want aero, go from the tops to the drops. There you go. Simple as that. But it would be tough being an engineer on these. These are pretty photos. It'd be tough being an engineer, wouldn't it? Because you've got to come up with new stuff all the time, and the stuff's already so good as it is. Chainstays are fairly big and bulbous. Even being an, uh, writing this article would be tough. I remember Trek had this in 2001, this red carbon on their uh, 5200. Actually, it was a 5500 of Durace, the uh, 77 group set. And uh, it was very nice. And it never really took off the colored carbon. But Trek, you know, bring it out every now and then. I think Trek probably got the best finishes on the bikes at the market at the moment. It's a H.15 fit. So it's uh, a little bit less than the H2 and in between the H1. I think Trek had even had H3 back in the day. Um, this we've got here, we've got the little new head of fangled dingy dingy. And I think these praying mantis egg sac spaces will help prevent people from riding, you know, all these spaces above their stem, which could compromise their stem steer uh, integrity. That That's pretty, isn't it? That red marbled carbon. I like that. I think that was fantastic. Gloss. Beautiful. Beautiful. How durable will T47 be? We don't know. We don't know. This seems to be a bit of a you know, this is what these brands do. It's a bit of a, you know, the, the purchaser, so I've out there. The purchaser is basically the test pilot. You know, these are basically, in my opinion, prototype bikes. Just, they're Gen 1. If, if, in my opinion, Gen 1 means prototype. So it hasn't been proven in the real world. Who's done 30,000 or 50,000 K on this frame set? I don't know if anyone has done that. So this is, on my frame sets, people have done 30, 40, 50, 100,000 Ks on pragma glycogen frame sets and Mawson frame sets. But no one's yet done that sort of mileage on the latest of Monda. So this is Gen 1. What problems will we have? Who knows? I, I'm calling it on the headset. For me, that's an Achilles heel. It's an Achilles heel. Let's have all the paint jobs here. That's nice. That looks good. Yep. Yeah. Black. And that, I've seen that was the one in up close and personal. It looks very nice. The red. Track always do a nice paint job. Be hard designing paints for people as well. Prices. These bikes ain't cheap. This is mechanical Ultegra. 9,000 Aussie. Six, seven. Wow, that's amazing. 7.2 kilos. So it's about 7.6 kilos with pedals. Set. So, wow. That's, that's insane. That ain't cheap. That's heavy. These bikes are heavy. These are heavy Amondas. 6.78. 12,000 US. Wow, it ain't cheap, but uh, that's, that's the economy. You know, things are getting more expensive. I get that. I get that. My pro my bikes are going to have a price hike soon as well. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is the deal. Very nicely finished. Not cheap, and uh, is, as nothing is for the big brands these days. So these frames are made in China, made in China. So like the pro, the seven series Madonna. It's got a bit of a different sh shape fork. And uh, how will that how will that pass real world test? Time will tell. Time will tell. And uh, but anyway, that's the deal there. Let's have a look at the Trek website. So crazy light, crazy fire. I wouldn't call it. I mean, hold your horses there. It ain't crazy light. It ain't crazy light. I mean, maybe for a disc brake bike it is. But let's have a look at the uh, the range on the Trek. This is a Trek USA website. Now, this is my unbiased, honest opinion here. Um, you know, so we've got Ultegra. Ultegra, SRAM, Force, ETAP. How much is the frame set? Let's have a little let's have a little giggle. Let's have a giggle. So it's twelve thousand dollar bikes, man. 
That's my favourite bike back in the day when it was rim brake, the ALR5. Good bike, but they've they've canned the rim brakes. Man, Trek are really going anti rim brake, aren't they? Isn't oh, that's disc only as well. Jeez, disc, disc. This one's disc, disc. Here we go. You've got rim brake. This, this is the best. I, I, I've got an Amanda SL. This would be the lightest bike that Trek have at the moment. SLR. These ones here, two thousand dollars for a frame, so not too bad. Double what I would, what I charge for custom, more than double actually, um, and uh, my frames would be stronger in a crash test for sure. Based on what I've seen out there from cracking SLRs and the seat post clamp, etc. But uh, so they're selling out. They're getting rid of all the old stock, clearing it out, clearing it out. What's that, what prices have we got going on there? Out of stock. Out of stock, it's got fifty six. It's jumping around, we have got time for that. But anyway, that's the deal there. So uh, the Trek and Monda, the heaviest I've ever done. They're calling it crazy light. But um, I would disagree on that one. But again, for disc brakes, they, they, they add weight. And if you need disc brakes, go ahead and get them. I think disc brakes are really good for gravel, for dirt and mud. And I think disc brakes are great for noobs. You know, so I am liking the disc brakes for the noobs out there for giving them a bit more braking confidence. You know, if you've got small hands or if you're a noob, you've got carbon rims, yeah, for sure, in the wet, disc brakes for the wind. Maybe you live in London and you, you're Uber Eats rider and you're on and off the brakes all the time, then, yeah, you know, that little disc brakes good for that in the wet. Other than that, for uh, for everyone else, uh, rim brakes have been fine for many, many years, especially on the alloy rim. But, hey, this is this is marketing. This is industry. You've got to bring out something new. Innovate or die, as uh, Mike Sinyard says. So this is the deal. This is the future disc brakes on road bikes and uh 7.2 kilos now is considered crazy light in in 2000 and uh 2007 if you if you said 7.2 kilos is crazy light people would laugh at you but in 2020 that's what we're seeing as a uh, as as the, the standard here but uh anyway that's the honest opinion from duran you know i'm not sponsored by any these brands so i can give you my total honest upfront you know opinion and uh it can be tough if you're in the industry to give an honest opinion because you can't really do that because your, your mates are working at the big brands or whatever so you gotta you know you can't keep it too real i understand that that's the deal there what do you expect but this is all just marketing hype um but end of the day i'm happy to see people on bikes no matter what brand you ride if you buy, buy one of my frames or you ride a trek or a specialized or a canada or a huffy or anything you ride a walmart bike i'm still going to say good idea you know end of the day what matters most is that you're out there on your bike, rocking up some miles, commuting to work, burning the fat, not oil, having a smile, getting other people into the sport. That's what matters most, into the lifestyle, I should say. It's not a sport, it's a lifestyle. And uh, there you go. Out there, end of the day, the uh, honest truth from Duran Rider. See you next video. What do you think of the new Trek and Monda 2021? Do you think it's sad that they've killed off the legacy of Amanda being the lightest bikes out there by making it all heavy disc disco wheels? I do.